So today we're going to talk about the sun and the moon features of Planet for Photographers. To start with, you can access the sun and moon menus by swiping down from the title bar like this, and you can see them here up along the top row. And as you can see, there are five tools, and today we're going to talk about the first four. And so to begin with, we're going to choose the first one, which is the rise and set feature like this. So what you see here at the top of the screen are all kinds of information that you're going to find useful. The top row of information relates to the sun, and the bottom row relates to the moon. Now there's four main sets of information, those relating to sunrise, which you can see here indicated by the yellow upward pointing arrow, those relating to sunset, which you can see next to the orange downward pointing arrow, those relating to moonrise, which are next to the blue upward pointing arrow, and those relating to moonset, which are next to the blue downward pointing arrow. You can also see how these four relate to the colored lines on the map. The yellow sunrise arrow corresponds to the yellow sunrise line right here, and the orange sunset arrow corresponds to the orange sunset line over here. The light blue arrow for moonrise corresponds to the light blue arrow for moonrise on the map, and the dark blue uh, moonset arrow corresponds to the dark blue moonset line on the map right just here. Now, in each case there's a time and an angle. Now the times are pretty straightforward. They correspond to the times of either sunset, sunrise, moonrise, or moonset. And in this example of April 28th, 2019 in Manhattan, you can see that sunrise occurs at 5.58 a.m., sunset occurs at 7.48 p.m., moonrise occurs at 3.16 a.m., and moonset occurs at 1.38 p.m. Now, before we go much further, let's just say a word about the exact definition of these events. The key thing that I want you to keep in mind is that all of these take place when either the very top of the moon or the sun touches the horizon. And that's not always what you might think. In other words, sunset happens when the very top of the sun disappears below the horizon. Moonrise happens when the very top of the moon emerges from beneath the horizon. And it's super important to keep this in mind since these particular events may or may not be the ones that you're interested in photographing. And in fact, more often than not, you might be interested in making your photograph several minutes on either side at the actual point of sunrise, sunset, moonrise, or moonset. Okay, but what about these angles? What's the deal with these? Well, they're the compass directions corresponding to the various rise and set events. In photography, we call these the azimuth angles, and they're measured relative to due north. So for example, due north itself corresponds to an azimuth angle of zero degrees like this. Due east has an azimuth angle of 90 degrees, due south has an azimuth angle of 180 degrees, and in the west has an azimuth angle of 270 degrees. So due north can actually have an azimuth angle of 360 degrees, but it's always referred to as zero degrees due north. In this particular instance, on this date and location, sunrise occurs at an azimuth, uh, or compass direction, of 70.5 degrees. Sunset occurs at an azimuth of 289.8 degrees. Moonrise occurs at an azimuth of 112.3 degrees. And moonset occurs at 249.6 degrees. Taken together, all of these angles and times allow you to precisely line up the locations of sunrise, sunset, moonrise, and moonset. Now, anytime you have a question about the meanings of these terms, or anything else in Planet for Photographers, as long as the color of the term is white, you can tap on it like this, and that'll bring up a window with an explanation. And the explanation may include a tip, like the one here, to long press to set the moonset time to the current time like this. So you can see down here at the bottom, after doing this, we've set the current time to 1.39 p.m., and up here the moonset time has turned to green color to indicate that. We can also do that with the sunrise time by long pressing over here, and you can see that the current time is now set to 5.58 a.m., and the sunrise time up here has also turned green. Great, okay, so now let's explore our second tool, which is Twilight. You can access this tool also from the main ephemeris menu as before. You can swipe to the left like this, or you can tap on the second small button right just up here. Now, as you know, Twilight is divided into three stages, civil, nautical, and astronomical. These are defined by the sun's angle, but this time, instead of the azimuth or compass direction of the sun, it's the angular distance below the horizon of the sun. So specifically, civil twilight is when the sun is anywhere between 0 and 6 degrees below the horizon, or negative 6 degrees. Nautical twilight is any time the sun is between 6 and 12 degrees below the horizon, or negative 6 and negative 12 degrees. And astronomical twilight is any time the sun is between 12 and 18 degrees below the horizon. 
Now you'll see here that twilights always, well, generally occur in pairs. These ones on the left are pre-dawn or before the dawn, and the ones on the right are after sunset. Now, of course, at high latitudes, all the phases of twilights are not always observed, sometimes it's 24 hours of daytime. And you can always tap on any of these twilights to get their definitions. And you can long press on any of the times to adjust the current time to the beginning of that twilight period. So for example, if we long press on pre-dawn civil twilight like this, that sets the current time to 529 in the morning over here. And we can long press on evening astronomical twilight to set the time to 854 p.m. like you can see. And you can also see that these three lines here that correspond to the azimuths of the sun at the different times of different twilights, even though the sun is below the horizon. So that's pretty much it for twilights, and we can move on to our third tool, which relates to our special hours, special photography hours. Now these are periods of time that are particularly good for photographs because they have a special mood. The first one is the golden hour, and this is the period of time just after sunrise and just before sunset, when the sun's colors has taken on a beautiful golden hue. It's a beautiful time for portraits. And the term golden hour is something of a misnomer because it can actually be much longer or less than an actual hour. And it's actually defined as the period of time when the sun has an angular height of between zero and six degrees above the horizon, or an elevation angle of zero, between zero and six degrees. The second special hour is the special period, I should say, is the blue hour. And this is the period of time shortly before sunrise and shortly after sunset when the sky has a marvelous blue color. This color is super peaceful and serene. It makes for especially good photographs of city skylines. Blue hour is defined as a period of time when the sun is between 4 and 8 degrees below the horizon. And finally, of course, we have night, which is the period of time when the sun is so far below the horizon it has no effect on the sky. And here, night is defined as a period of time when the sun is 18 degrees or further below the horizon. So in this example, night begins at 9.32 p.m. and ends at 4.15 a.m. So now let's move on to our fourth tool, which is the sun and moon position. Now in this tool, this is the only page where you can see the angle of the sun above the horizon as we've been calling it as the sun elevation angle, as well as its azimuth, along with the moon's elevation angle and the moon's azimuth. Now, we've already talked about using the elevation angle to define the periods of twilight. Just to be clear, anytime there's a plus sign or minus sign in front of the angle, it means that there's a, uh, it means that the object is above or below the, the horizon. And there is no such plus or minus sign associated with the azimuth angle since it isn't needed. So really, just as a heads up, anytime you see a plus or a minus sign along with an angle, you know it's the elevation angle. Now there's also a helpful visual cue about whether the sun or the moon is above or below the horizon. When either of them are below the horizon, their symbols are dimmed, as you can see here. So like this, when the sun is above the horizon, the icon has its full color. Later this evening, as we scroll along and we put it below the horizon, the icon becomes dimmed. Likewise with the moon, here it's above the horizon, and we can see it with the full color. Later on after it's set, it becomes dim. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now right over here, there's some inf good information about the current phase of the moon and the percent il illumination of the moon phase, which is in this case is 36.2%. Now, whenever the phase of the moon has a, or the percent illumination is 2.5% or less, we consider it for photography purposes to have a new moon phase. And conversely, when the percent illumination is 96.5% or greater, we consider the moon to be full. And also note, by the way, there's just no option for tapping on these moon phases or percent to change them because they're simply fixed for that date. Now here's a very cool option. You can I don't know if you knew this, but you can set the azimuth of your camera to line up exactly with the azimuth of the sun or the moon. Now I know we haven't talked much about this, but take a look at this. If you click down here on this button, we can select the option which produces a green fan on the map corresponding with the center of the green fan corresponding to not only the azimuth of the current camera's orientation, but also the field of view corresponding to the chosen lens focal length. That's pretty incredible, right? And in fact, if we long press on the any of the azimuth values, you can see that the center of the green fan moves to line up correspondingly like this. That's pretty cool. Now, same thing goes with the elevation angle. By pressing on it, you can set the camera's elevation angle to that value. Now, this isn't immediately obvious on the map, um, but 
check this out. If we change our viewing option to the viewfinder mode, which you'll remember from our tutorial on markers, then you can view the angle of the sun or the moon and whether or not they're above the horizon. And after doing so, now when you long press on the elevation angle for the sun or the moon, you'll see the result in the viewfinder as you can see here. And you can also explore the effect of lens focal length on the appearance. All you do here is simply click on here on the focal length and you select a value somewhere down here in the telephoto range. Then when you go back and you view the sun or the moon, you can see it appears correspondingly larger. And if you simply long press on either the moon icon or the sun icon like this, then you simultaneously set both the view through the viewfinder to the elevation angle and the azimuth like this. This option, by the way, is also available in the very first tool we started with today, so we can go back there and long press on the sun or the moon, and that's what you see through the viewfinder. So now let's go back to the map view and explore this last option up here in the upper right. What this shows are two options that you can toggle between. One shows the hourly positions of the sun and the moon overlaid on the map, and the other doesn't. This is the only screen, by the way, where you can see this visual display of the hour positions. So what exactly do these hourly positions represent? Simply what it sounds like, the angle and the elevation and angle of the sun and the moon, where the hours are labeled 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and so on. But check this out. Here's a very cool way of exploring this. All you need to do is use two fingers to push up like this, look at that, and then rotate the map view, and you can see how the sun and the moon move across the sky relative to your map position. I love this. For example, you could explore different ways to position the sun to set over this bridge. And after you've done tilting and rotating the map to your satisfaction, all you have to do is tap over here on this compass icon, and that'll return the map to a northern orientation viewed from directly above. So that's it for the sun and the moon features for Planet for Photographers. Hope you found this useful, and good luck with your planning.